Okay, so it is uh, May the 21st. It's been uh, a while. I've had some ups and downs with my plants. Um, I started them uh, mid-February and for some reason I had some problems getting the seeds to germinate. After a couple weeks I, I ditched them. I started again. I had to start a third time and um, eventually did wind up getting uh, my plants germinating. But, you know, as you could imagine it was probably towards the end of March by the time that uh, I had my plants germinated and um, <coughs> that puts them pretty pretty much a uh, month behind so um, they're doing great you know they look nice but they're not as big as uh, they normally are at this time of the uh, of the year so I thought um, well probably another month or so um, actually a little bit less than a month and I will be uh, moving them all outside and uh, giving uh, you know separ separating them into different categories giving them away to friends and co-workers and uh, relatives and uh, anyway, in any case um, uh, I thought it would be a good idea just to do a quick little uh, little video here and um, what I'm uh, what I'll do is I'll just give you just a quick little rundown of what I have um, and now and I'm, I'm gonna mention I'm doing something a little different because you know this is a different area than I had before I used to have them in the rec room a rec room and um, and having these lights on in the rec room was always annoying to everybody so now that I've got my own little space here I can do whatever I want and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the ones that are the smallest and um, you know are nowhere near ready to go out I got a little Pereira over here compared to the other Pereiras around it, a little tiny boot. Um, I, I basically have at least one tiny version of, uh, of every kind of plant. And so I was looking at that and I thought, you know what I should do? I should maybe repot those small ones and, um, and just keep them here inside over the summer and then over the next winter and see what I get for next spring. Now the reason I wouldn't bring them outside to um, to develop is because um, I've done that many times over the uh, over the years and um, managed to bring bugs in with them, which I want to avoid. So the best way to avoid that is not to bring them outside. Anyway, I don't know how great that's going to work, but I'm going to try. Uh, you know, clearly um, the plants are fine. I give them uh, fertilizer, and uh, you know they do they do fine. And then maybe they'll start to uh, to give me peppers over the uh, over the winter. So that'd be kind of neat. Anyway, okay, that's enough of that. I'll just give you a quick little rundown of um, of what I've got. I've got four Pereiras. Um, I have um, three seven pods. I have five butch teas. Now you can see. Um, butch teas and seven pods uh, these are all just pure white they always kind of start off that way they really need the fertilizer so once they start giving them fertilizer they all start to fill in and you can see I mean this is filling in because it was all all white or yellow kind of um, but now you can see where they're all starting to fill in this one was pure white and now finally starting to get some color uh, they really do need the fertilizer, and the fertilizer I use is bone meal and calcium, magnesium, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, uh, this is my one and only Maruga that came up, so that's kind of a precious commodity to me. Um, then I've got um, six Bujolokias right over here. None of them are huge, but they're all starting to flower, which, you know, and then I've got this tiny little one here, which, uh, you know, I start to pull flowers off so that it continues to grow, but, you know, I just can't do it, it's just too many. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave them. The Ahi Hachapan over here, I've got, um, um, what do I have, 11 of those. Yeah, and they're, they're pretty nice. I mean, they're all beautiful plants. The, uh, the Ahi Hachapan, if you've ever, uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, they're, they're really a nice pepper. I mean, they're sweet tasting, but they've got a little bit of heat. They're, they're perfect for almost everybody, you know, they're the kind of pepper that you could, uh, you could, uh, serve to your in-laws and not have them angry at you. Um, I'll say something else about uh, the Peruvian Arncia, which is behind there, which I talk about all the time. Bishop's crowns are another one uh, very similar um, to that. They're a little bit hotter. Um, they're, they've got a really neat little shape, They're sometimes called the deacon's hat, which I guess is the same thing, just a different way of saying the same things. And um, uh, they've got like their three cornered uh, peppers. They kind of balloon outwards. And um, they have a very sweet, distinctive flavor, and uh, are really nice. They look very attractive. They're really cool looking. You can see them in my last year's video as well. I showed them. Um, I grew them. 
they're they're really fun and uh, and at some points there's no heat at all but then they start getting hotter as you get towards the center which is typical anyway um then i have uh peruviana and CEO. um i should say i have six bishops crowns so i don't know if i mentioned that and at the end here i have one mystery pepper which judging from the leaves it's probably going to turn out to be a butch tea or a seven pot or something like that because none of the other plants do it and you can see really i've been going through this for uh you know, I think what was it, 2007 or 8, the first time that I actually started growing peppers. And, uh, and every year I go through this. The first year I freaked out when I saw it. But you can see they, all the peppers go through the same uh, fertilizer regimen. I treat them all exactly the same way. And uh, those are the only ones that, uh, that do this white, um, this white kind of uh, nonsense. Uh, okay, so Peruviana Ernst is my all-time favorite pepper. It's got enough heat to uh, make you happy. Uh, you might use two or three in a meal, uh, I would, and, um, but it's got uh, such a great flavor. They're kind of uh, teardrop shaped, they're, uh, they're a very nice dark orange color, and um, you know, just great, great peppers. This is my biggest plum right over here, so nice. Yeah, so, um, so there they are, I've got them all lined up in the back because I very optimistically hoped that they were going to just shoot up and take over, and oh, I've been sick! Anyway, and then and then not too long ago, I had um, this little guy come up. So seeds were coming up, um, like extra seeds that were in the uh, peat pellets uh, were coming up afterwards. Uh, so I was transplanting them. That's basically why I've got so many small ones. Uh, they're even younger than the other ones. But my uh, my idea, I think, is going to be kind of fun to see what happens. I'll, only, I'll turn off half the lights. So I'll only have half the lights going all summer, um, and that should that should prove to be just fine. So, uh, so that's that, and then uh, I have four hot paper lanterns, which uh, typically are tall, tall straight plants like this. But um, I kind of ha I did something to them, and now they're all kind of bushy looking, which is uh, which is weird. But um, I guess I'll just have to wait and see what happens with them. I have them all jammed up together on this part over here. They didn't have any reason at all to start uh, growing upwards because they're right beside the light. That's why I've got no no plants besides the light now. I don't have any plants beside the light because um, they are not going to grow upwards if they're sitting over here. They grow squat and they look like the, you know, like the uh, Buchelokias and um, those ones, which all typically end up as bush plants as opposed to tall straight plants. And then the Ajiumbas were all up there too. And they're also typically uh, tall plants, but not these ones. So, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what ends up happening with them. Now I planted, I ended up getting about 18 tomato plants. I was trying to, uh, to, to grow tomato plants from seeds and um, I had horrible luck. These are the plants right here. They did not, they all died. I mean, when I transplanted them, they didn't like it. They uh, were very stubborn. Uh, nothing I did helped at all. They, they didn't thrive no matter what I did. I thought they'd be easy. I thought they'd be a piece of cake compared to pepper plants, but nope, they're hard. And then when, if you, it, like I tried um, keeping them watered, they didn't like it, some died. Then I said, well, maybe they don't need as much water. I gave them less water, they died. So now I'm stuck, or I'm left with, not stuck with, but left with one subarctic plant. The only one that actually is still alive from the 18 that I had to start with. And then these two plants are just seeds that just, just started to just suddenly germinate it out of nowhere. And uh, they're clearly tomato plants, so there's a beefsteak, there's a Roma. So these guys are going to sit here until next year, because I'm going to see what happens with them. I don't know what to expect, but they're doing great. So we'll just, we'll just have to see what happens with them. Anyway, so that pretty well, um, pretty well does it. Um, just said May 21st, and I've got another three weeks maybe. Um, so I guess uh, once I have the plants um, um, out, I'll get, I bring them out usually the second week of June and uh, then I slowly acclimatize them to the sun and then we, then the, um, sorry, and then I uh, plant the ones I'm going to plant and that's usually when I, uh, when I actually post a video. So that's when I'm going to, uh, when I'll do it and um, that should just about do it for now. Anyway. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it.